World, Nicholas Coriano here. I wanted to help you guys today learn about how to project your revenues, how to do your financial projections in your business plan. So if you don't know who I am, I graduated business school, graduated law school, been writing business plans full time since 2012, over 350 happy clients. And now I'm here to share with you one of the most common questions I get. What do I do? How do I project my finances and my projected revenues? when I don't have anything to go off of. So when I'm a startup business, so this is a startup business. If you're an established business, pretty simple. Go look at your past performance and project off of there. And you're gonna use your marketing spend as your basis of assumption. So I highlight this basis of assumption. What does that mean? This is a very key important term. So if you ever did a business plan, you know that there's certain sections. There's the executive summary, your company description, your market research, your industry analysis, right? Executive summary, company description, market research, industry analysis, your management slash organizational plan, your marketing plan, your financial projections, and your conclusion. Now, why do you do it in this order? Well, the market research and industry analysis is your basis of assumption for your financial projections. What does this mean? So let's give you, let's give a, a perfect example. You never started a business before. You want to start one here in Shell in Connecticut. We're Servitude Intelligent Relations Office. And by the way, if you haven't seen our website, visit our website, servitude.com. Okay? Back, back to the financial projection. So let's say you're in Shell in Connecticut, and for argument's sake, let's say there's uh, 800,000 people here. Right? I'm not sure how many people they are here. It really doesn't matter. This is one assumption. Okay? This is, again, the basis of assumption. Remember what we're trying to get to is how much money are we going to make or how much do we think we're going to make? So let's say there's 800,000 people. Okay? And let's say we factor in that a fourth of them. Now, remember, this is where good market research and industry analysis comes in. Buy the reports, take the surveys. Go out and ask questions to potential business owners or business owners already established to get this, this demographic, right? And out of those 800,000 people, we say, well, we think 100,000 of them eat out, okay? And out of those 100,000 um, that eat out, there's 30 other restaurants in town, right? So you got to divide this by 30, whatever that number is. That becomes your basis of assumption. Right, so whatever this number is, call that uh, divided by 30, point zero zero what? 333? Three, three, three? Mm -hmm. Right, whatever that number is. Now let's say you say you're going to get a third of this. Right, so you're factoring and you're going to get 1,111 customers. This is what I mean by a basis of assumption. You have to have some key underlying facts in your market research and industry analysis to get to your financial projections. So your market research is usually your population statistics, your income statistics for the geography, et cetera, et cetera. Your industry analysis is more like what's the pizza restaurants in the town doing? Um, what are the pizza, what's the pizza industry in the nation doing? What are their profit margins? Um, what are the costs of supplies? That's your industry analysis where your market analysis is more population based, right? So that's what you want to keep in mind when you're talking about projecting your financials, right? Is what are your basis of assumption? What are you assuming, right? And your basis of assumption should always be off of hard data. You never want to make up this market research or industry analysis. You want to get it from census data. You want to get it from an IBIS world report. You want to get it from um, some credible source, usually a .gov um, or a .edu. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So that's your basis of assumption. Now, remember, this is an educated guess. So what I want you guys to realize, and um, let me see if I can get a. Do we have the little eraser thing here? That's okay. What I what I want to what I want to let you know is that this basis of assumption. Once you make this guess and run it through the system and actually start a business, actually do it. If you're an established business, your financial projections are directly correlated to your marketing budget. Over here. So remember, executive summary, company description, market research, industry analysis, management and organizational plan. These are your people. This is your marketing plan, your financial projections, your conclusion. Your marketing plan, right, is directly correlated to your financial projections. So for example, um, in June, I spent $3,000 on marketing. 
right? And we made 20000 in revenue, okay? You have a napkin back there anywhere, Chris? That's okay. All right, so we made 3000 and 20000 Now, the month before, thank you. Give me a second here, guys. So I can show you guys this a little bit better. Pardon the mess. Okay, so let's say the month before I made, I spent 1.5K on marketing and I made 10,000, right? And then the next month I spent 3,000 on marketing and I made 20,000. This is a mathematical formula you wanna to get to. As a startup, you don't know this formula. So you're gonna test, you're gonna test all these marketing avenues, TV, right, uh, radio, I don't know why I'm giving you all the antique ones. Internet, that's really where you should start, right? Social media and social events, right? So you test all these things out and you realize that when I spend X amount here, it brings me a certain amount in revenue. Once you have this number, right, that you know if when you spend 1,500 you get 10,000 and then you try it again, that's the key, you gotta test it again. And you spend 3,000, you get 20,000. Now you have a model, you have a mathematical formula, right? You know that if you spend, and you're gonna to have to test this again, but if you spend 6,000, you're gonna make 40,000. So that's how you put together your financial projections when you don't have anything. When you don't have anything, you want a basis of assumption, right? And the basis of assumption is gonna be off your market research and your industry analysis, your population statistics, your um, income statistics, um, any kind of moving statistics, so let's say road traffic statistics when you're talking about leasing in a major um, plaza or something. And then off of that, those are your assumptions. You're gonna guesstimate, right? You're gonna guesstimate how much you think you can make. If you're an established business, you wanna look at your marketing spend. And you wanna say, well, we spent this much, we spent this much, we spent this much to make this much, and then test it again. And eventually what'll happen is you'll come for a dollar for dollar formula somewhere that you'll know if you increase it 20%, your income will increase 20%. And that's really the, the golden grail of business is when you know how, where to put your money and where you're gonna get a good ROI on your marketing spend, right? A return on investment on your marketing spend. That's what you're looking for. So if you don't know how to project your revenues or if you still need help with it, give me a call. I've ran over 350 business plans for clients. I can definitely help you. But hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, Put them in the comments section below and share this video if you think it'll be useful to anybody. Hope you guys are having a great day. Keep rocking, guys.